Generation 242. Welcome to Generation 242, where we talk about Jesus, His Word, and His life in you. Thank you so much for tuning in, and Happy Thanksgiving! It's Anthony Noble and Robert Baltadano with you, and we're doing a very, very special Thanksgiving broadcast. Uh, We figure, you know, it's Thanksgiving evening. Uh, What a great time for us to be able to express our thanks to the Lord and uh, just offer our praises to Him. And so basically what Robert and I are going to be doing for the hour is we're going to be, you know, talking about the Lord, talking about what it means to be thankful to God and talking about how to be thankful to God practically. And then we're also going to uh, give some love to our Facebook fans. Uh, You know, our Facebook fans, you guys have posted up uh, some things that you are thankful for to the Lord, a little bit about what God is doing in your life. And so we're also going to be uh, sharing some of those things as well. And Robert and I are going to be expounding upon those things and uh, talking about them. So just this is an exciting night, Robert. I'm excited and happy Thanksgiving, by the way. Hey, thank you. Happy Thanksgiving to you, too. And by the way, I just want to let you guys know as well that you can watch us on YouTube. You can watch it live on HD. Uh, just go to kwve.com, click Watch Live, and uh, that link will direct you right to the YouTube channel. And uh, you can watch us live uh, there on YouTube. And it's a great opportunity, you know, for, for people to uh, kind of like... I guess almost like feel like they're involved, like they're sitting in the studio with us, you right. know, and to have this opportunity. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, Thanksgiving Day is always a, a great time to to gather with family, friends, and to just um, enjoy each other. And and I know sometimes, you know, and I, I say sometimes, probably not the right word, but in America, you know, how many family uh, families get together to uh, not only just eat the turkey, but but to really be thankful about life and be thankful about things, especially you know things of the Lord. Not many, you right. know, people look forward to the food, the drinking and all of that stuff, uh, but not many really sit down together as a family and they say, let, let's talk about what are we thankful for? Right. Because we are very, you know, there's so many things that we are thankful for. And I think that's huge for us to be doing, Robert, on Thanksgiving and, and every day of the week for that matter, yeah. not just Thanksgiving, every day of the year, exactly. rather, um, you know, because what we should be doing as Christians and we can take this day as an example to our unsaved friends and family, Yeah, you know, most of the time. You know, tonight on Thanksgiving, we're together with our family, with our friends, and a lot of them don't know the Lord. And, you know, if if you're having a a Thanksgiving dinner at your house or something of that nature, uh, what a great opportunity to be able to just, you know, maybe stop after you eat and say, you know, let's let's talk about what we're thankful for. And let's talk about the blessings that God has bestowed upon us. And let's remember those things and talk about those things. And I think that's a, a good way to to witness to our unbelieving friends and family. It is. It's a, it's a great way because I, I've been around uh, family members and, and sometimes, you know, people will, uh, some of the family members will bring a, uh, a non-Christian and they kind of hang out with us. Because, you know, we, we, we like to take in people that may not have a place to go for Thanksgiving. Right. And sometimes they're, they're not believers, but they come in and they hang out with us. And then, uh, let's say, for example, you know, as far as as a Christian family, they get together and they, you know, go around the table and say, hey, just, you know, tell us what, what you're thankful for. And when it gets to that person who doesn't really know the Lord, um, it kind of shocks them. They're kind of like, wow, I've never had this opportunity to actually just express something to be thankful for. You know what I mean? Especially if they're complainers, if they're always complaining about things and they're always negative. Um, it really strikes people really in a deep way right. when you ask them, what are you thankful for? You know, sometimes they kind of you know, it takes a while for them to say something because they, they don't think that way. Yeah, it's not something that you think about on right. a daily basis. There's exactly. so much distraction going on in your daily life. There's so many practical things to do yeah. that it's like to, to really stop and think, what am I thankful to God for? Right. It, it takes a little bit of effort, but it it's does. important that I think, well, I think it's important that we as Christians would do that. And I think, Robert, as we kind of jump and dive into the program now, uh, I think something important for us to recognize and to realize and to know as a Christian is how do I do I be thankful to the Lord? You know, how do I do that practically? What does it look like? We hear people saying all the time, like you and I just said at the beginning of the program here, you know, well, just just be thankful to God. We need to thank the Lord. But how do we do that practically? How do we stay focused on that? How do we purpose it in our hearts that, you know what, I'm going to be thankful to the Lord? And I think we we find that answer in Joshua chapter 4. Here in Joshua chapter 4, uh, the children of Israel have just 
entered into the promised land. They just crossed over the Jordan River and they're entering into the promised land. They're ending their time in the wilderness there for 40 years. And now God is allowing them to enter in as they cross over the Jordan. And it says in in Joshua chapter 4, I'm going to read a little bit of it here. It says, And it came to pass when all the people had completely crossed over the Jordan, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Take for yourselves twelve men from the people, one man from every tribe, and command them, saying, Take for yourselves twelve stones from here, out of the midst of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet stood. You shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where you lodge tonight. Then Joshua called the twelve men, who he had appointed from the children of Israel, one man from every tribe. And Joshua said to them, Cross over before the ark of the Lord your God, into the midst of the Jordan, and each one of you take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time to come, saying, What do these stones mean to you? Then you shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it crossed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be a memorial to the children of Israel forever. And you know, Robert, I, I think about that, and I think we see two keys in this text on how to, re- how to remain thankful to the Lord. And key number one is this. Remember God's faithfulness in the past. I think that that's that's key. This is exactly what Joshua was telling the the priest to do here: to go get the stones out of the middle of the Jordan River, so that when their children ask in the future, or when their grandchildren ask, uh, they're able to say, you know, this is what God has done for us in the past. And I think that's key to being thankful for the to the Lord today. Definitely, you know, giving thanks to God was an important part of the lives uh, in, in the children of Israel's lives. And uh, you read Psalm 95, verses 1 through 5, Leviticus 22, 1 Chronicles 23. And those passages you see there uh, that every morning, every evening, you know, the, the Levites sacrificed an offering to the Lord in order to keep the people's focus on their true provider, God. And just kind of like what you're saying, it's it's so important that God said, you know what, I want this to be part of your life to right. the children of Israel. You know, Psalm 107, verse 1 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercies endure endure forever endures forever and i think that's an important part of the christian life even today even as with joshua the children of israel as we live our lives today in the lord god still sees thanksgiving as an important part of our lives and i think robert as christians it can be so easy uh to forget god's faithfulness in the past yeah you know as i was studying through this text i was thinking about what god has done for me and some of the major victories that god has given to me and i'm like You know, I kind of just forgot all about that. Yeah. You know, I should have maybe written that down in a journal somewhere. I should have taken one of these memory stones because, you know, when you sort of forget about it, then it's like you you keep on moving on with life and it's sort of out of sight, out of mind. And then when you begin to hit trials or maybe some trouble in the future, then it's like, what am I going to do? Where is God in this situation? But if we remember, you know what? God got me through something like this in the past. Mm -hmm. I have a memory stone. I remember God did this for me. Then it helps us to remain thankful for the present. And that's one of the hows. How do we give thanks to God? Like you're saying is giving thanks to God is a way to remember the goodness of God. You know, that God is good all the time. And, you know, it's interesting to me, too, as as I want to add this to to our Thanksgiving um, uh, topic here, that uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 21, when Paul is describing those who turn their backs on God and they became dark in their thinking and their, you know, their minds became futile, he said this, he says, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful it's interesting that he says, nor were thankful. It's almost like describing the person who is who has an ungrateful heart is a person that's described as somebody who's just dark in their mm-hmm. thoughts, uh, foolish in their hearts and whatnot. And I think that's very important. And it just shows us that when we are not thankful, we're not, when we're not a thankful kind of person, uh, we turn sour, I right. guess, in, in our character. It's absolutely. Just, just not a good person, you know? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. I agree. Uh, and I think, Robert, the second key that we see here in this text, key number one is remember God's faithfulness in the past. And I think key number two, we find it here in verse seven. It says, and these stones shall be a memorial for the children of Israel forever. Yeah. That word forever means, you know, all in, in, in the future, eternally. Right. And so I think the key number two to remaining thankful is to keep an eternal perspective, mm-hmm. not just looking at the temporal. You know what I mean? I think if we have our, our joy or our thankfulness or our relationship with the Lord grounded in the temporal, 
then sometimes it's going to be good and sometimes it's going to be bad because circumstances are constantly changing all the time. Right. But if we keep our thankfulness and if we keep our joy and we keep our, you know, our relationship with the Lord grounded in something eternal, grounded in Christ, who's eternal, who's the same yesterday, today, and forever, then, then we're going to, our thankfulness is going to remain even keel. It's going to be constant. It's never going to fade because we're keeping an eternal perspective. And let me add this to this, to, to what you said, giving thanks acknowledges God's presence. His, I'm sorry, his existence. Yes. It's kind of like what you're saying. You know, God is eternal, same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't have an end, doesn't have a beginning. So when we're thankful, and I like what you said, it really, it shows that we're acknowledging his existence. When I'm saying, thank you, Lord, I'm saying thank you to a God who's existing, right? Who's real, yeah. And uh, and I think that's so cool because it keeps us with that understanding of that eternal perspective and that God is exists. That we're not just saying thank you to to, to to a God that's you know not knowing, but but God exists. And I think that's a cool thing because it keeps us fresh, it keeps us motivated, and it keeps us focused yes. on God's existence. Amen. So two keys to remaining thankful as we celebrate Thanksgiving this evening. Key number one: remember. God's faithfulness in the past and keep an eternal perspective for the future. And those two keys really do help you remain thankful to the Lord in the present time. Right. And uh, that's really what we want to focus on tonight, Robert. And we have some uh, Facebook fans that have actually posted on our Facebook of some things. We asked them, what are you thankful to God for? And uh, we have some wonderful posts. Some people said some wonderful things. And so basically what we want to do, you know, for the remainder of the program, until we hit the end, then we might have some little conclusion. But for the remainder of the program, uh, we want to acknowledge some of you guys who have posted on our Facebook page and, and talked about what you're thankful to God for. And we want to elaborate a little bit on some of the things that you posted. And so, Robert, why don't we begin talking about uh, some of the things that people are thankful for that posted on our Facebook page. Sure, sure. We asked you guys to uh, Facebook us and also send us email. Uh, you know, so so we took them from both from from both sides. You know, Facebook and email. And uh, one came in from Yvette from Myrna Valley, and this is what she's thankful for. She said, "For God's unfailing love, for being the one that I can always count on, and for family and friends that He has blessed me with." That was Yvette from Myr- Myrna Valley. And you know, when when I read this, I'm thinking, you know what? Sometimes we forget God's unfailing love. And what does that really mean when you think about God's unfailing love? Because you think about God's love. You know, God is loving and all of that. But I like what she said, unfailing love. That's Romans chapter 8. His love is inseparable. There's nothing that Mm -hmm. could separate us from the love of Christ. And sometimes, even with me, I forget to thank God for that inseparable love, for that unfailing love. It's comforting. It's also an assurance for us that we can always count on God because his love is unfailing. You know, no one can love like God can. Right. You know, I mean, there are people that, uh, you know, love very, their love is very limited. You know, people hold grudges. They don't always treat you in loving ways. But with God, his love, no matter what, is always strong. And I think that's the assurance that we have, the comfort that we have, that his love is not like, you know, man's love. And that's an important key I think we have to realize as Christians. You know, Robert, I talk to a lot of unbelievers. And, you know, you bring them to church and they hear about the love of God And then you ask them, you know, do do you realize that God loves you? And that's something that's hard for them to grasp. And I think the reason why it's hard for them to to grasp is because they've been let down by so many people in life. Right. You know what I mean? Maybe they got let down by their mother or their father. You know, a lot of young adults who might be listening to this maybe have just been raised by a single mother or maybe they're raised by a single father. And it's like, you know, my, my earthly father let me down. And so I think it's it's hard for people to grasp sometimes that God's love is unfailing because they've been failed so many times in life by by people by sinners we're, we're fallen right and so I love that that uh, that post by Yvette talking about God's unfailing love because that's what we have to realize as a Christian we have a friend Jesus Christ who who wants to be in in, in an intimate personal relationship with us and he will never ever fail us people might fail us people might stab you in the back people might lie to you but jesus christ will never ever do any of those things because his love is perfect his love is unfailing and we can rely on him 
100% of the time. And that, that's why we can count on him all the time. We can count on him. And I like what Hebrews 4.16 says, that we can come to the to the throne of grace. We can come boldly to the throne of grace. In other words, that, you know, every time we come to God's throne, when we come into prayer, God is there. He's not like somewhere else. Like, oh, wait, hold on. I'm coming back. You know, it's he's there. Yeah. And, and that's where we can always count on God that even when we're going through a hard time, like you're saying, if, if, you, if you feel unloved or, or, or whatever, you can go to God and say, Lord, I'm just, this is where I'm at. This is how I feel. And, and God has a way to to fill us, you know, with his spirit, to fill us with his love, to fill us with his faithfulness. And uh, that's why we can say that, you know, we can count on God because he is faithful. Absolutely. You know, just to, it reminds me, Robert, a couple of weeks ago, I was going through a trial. I was going through a struggle. I was discouraged. And I went to a, a men's Bible study at my church. And I told some of the men there about what I was going through and, and some of the discouragement that I was going through. And, you know, they said, well, let's pray. And, th- and they prayed for me. And, and I'm not kidding you. As, as they were praying, God was, God was faithful. His unfailing love was faithful because he gave me the victory over the struggle that I was going through, over the, the, the discouragement that I was going through as they were praying. And, and I got the victory right then and there. And, and I love that about the Lord, you know, as we seek him in prayer, you know, and as, as we seek him in his word, uh, his unfailing love begins to reveal itself to us Mm -hmm. and you know that that unfailing love i count on that every single day of my life and you know the other thing too is that uh when we express our 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 giving you know our thanksgiving to god in that way in a way we're showing our appreciation to god as well you know that's one way that we can show our appreciation is by just coming up with things like what yvette shared you know for his unfailing love you know being the one i can count on you know, we, we appreciate him. And you know how it is when people appreciate you, it feels good, doesn't it? Right, absolutely, yeah. When, when we on a human level say, hey, man, good job. Hey, I appreciate you. It feels good because you're like, wow, uh, you know, I, I'm appreciated. You know, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm worthy of something. I'm valuable to that person. And uh, you look at God and it's like, you know, what all the things that God has done, especially when it comes to his love, you know, he wants to hear us, his children to say, I appreciate your love, Lord. I really, really do. Absolutely. Because without your love, I wouldn't be here. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for your post, Yvette. All right, Robert, let's move on to our next one. We got a few minutes before the break. We're going to try to squeeze in one more. Sure. This is uh, from Maria Laverne, California. She says, I'm thankful to God for opening her eyes or opening my eyes. She's referring to that, uh, to the truth. I am thankful that he is faithful. Even when I am not, he is trust trustworthy and true. He is my hope and my salvation. And you know, that, that first sentence that she's thankful to God for opening her eyes to the truth, man, that's, that's awesome. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I think every Christian should be thankful that God opened their eyes to the truth. Without that, we'd be blind to this day. A hundred percent. Yeah, I agree with that a hundred percent. I, I am thankful for God's truth as well. The truth that he reveals to us in his word. Yeah. And you know, Robert, I think about, you know, how powerful God's word is you know, when I do my devotions on a daily basis and I go to, you know, Bible studies on Wednesday night and, and Sunday mornings or even other various ones that I'll go to throughout the week, God's word, his truth always has something special for me. You mm-hmm. know, what we, you know, whatever I'm going through in life, his, his word always has a way of just speaking into that specific situation uh, in my life, uh, giving me perspective as to the things that, you know, we might be going through, giving me understanding uh, it reveals God to me more fully. And, you know, the, the truth of God that we find in his word is is awesome. I love it. That's another thing that I'm thankful for. I agree with Maria. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's very important for us to, to remember that every day that, you know, when, when we meet people that are not Christians and they're involved in things that are destructive, you know, you got to kind of think back and reflect, man, that, that was me, you know, or this could be me. You know what I mean? Because I've thought of this before. I'm like, you know what? If I wasn't a Christian today, I'm like, I, I, I've said this to myself, where would I be today? What right. kind of person would I be today? Would, would I still be married? You know what I mean? Because I know the kind of person that I was. And I'm like, you know, would I have this non-Christian marriage right now? Would it just be hanging by a thread? You know, just, just to think about where would I be today? You know, I have some ideas where I would be. They're not really good. I, they're not good things, you know. Um, but But I'm thankful that I am where I'm at right now because... You know, in the love of Christ is the pl- best place to be, and that my eyes have been opened up to His truth. Because before, life to me was kind of like black and white. Yeah, 
The moment uh, I, I stepped into that relationship with Christ, it's like life became more colorful. Amen. You know, I, be, I was able to see things differently. Yeah. And I love that. And it's funny, too, that we talk about the Word of God being true. You probably read this, Robert. There was a, there was a news article in the news last week about uh, the Bible being sold at Costco. Yeah. And they put it in the fiction section. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I read that. I'm like, well, if they want to put it in the fiction section, if somebody is going to actually buy it in the fiction section and read it genuinely, they're going to find out that it's true. Exactly. So I'm like, if you want to sell it in the fiction section, if you want to sell it in an atheist store, go ahead and sell it. Yeah. At least the word of God is being sold. Yeah, it's funny because, uh, in, in fact, they actually, uh, they, they apologized. It wasn't, yeah, I, I, saw think, that. I think it was the distributor, whoever sent it to them came with that label and right. they just kind of put it there. But it, whatever happened, you know, but it's true. I like what you said. You're right. The word of God will not return void. Yep. So yeah, if it wants to disguise itself as a fictional book, go for it because yeah. we know it's powerful. Right. Know, according to Hebrews chapter four, it's a living, it's alive. So um, yeah, you know what? If a little kid picks it up, you know, have fun with it. You're going to get saved. That's right. Thank you so much for your post, uh, Maria. All right. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to our very special Thanksgiving broadcast of Generation 242. We got to go to a break. Uh, but what we're doing tonight is we're just expressing our thanks to the Lord. And uh, we asked some of you who are on our Facebook page uh, to post up some things that you're thankful to God for. And so tonight we're just, you know, telling people your name, telling them where you're from and telling them what you're thankful to God for. And we're talking about it. We're thanking the Lord and we're praising him. Uh, we're going to continue doing that when we come back from the break. So stay close. Welcome back to Generation 242. I'm Anthony Noble. Along with me is Robert Baltadano. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we're doing a very special Thanksgiving broadcast tonight. And basically what we're doing is we're just talking about the Lord. We're expressing our thanks to the Lord. We're talking about His faithfulness. We're talking about His grace. We're talking about His mercy. Uh, we're talking about the fact that you know, he's he's eternal. He exists and he always has existed. And we just we thank him for all these things. And uh, so as we're doing that, we asked you uh, our some of our Facebook fans to post up some of the things that that you're thankful to God for. And uh, we're reading some of those things. We're talking about those things, having such a good time. Uh, just fellowshipping and just uh, being able to hear some of the things that you, our listeners, thankful for. Uh, and by the way, t speaking of our Facebook page, if you haven't uh, jumped on board yet, uh, you can do that now. It's facebook.com forward slash generation 242. Once again, that's facebook.com forward slash generation 242. You know, I kind of like this because we're making this a big deal. Yep. You know, we're making it a big deal because it is a big deal to God. Right. You know, it is a big deal to God. Like as, like we talked about early in the in the program that God made it clear to the children of Israel that this, you know, the sacrifice of Thanksgiving was important for them to include that in their sacrifices uh, to just keep God, you know, at the forefront of their mind, to, just to remember him in so many ways. And, uh, you know, as we as Christians make a, make Thanksgiving a big deal, because obviously we connect Thanksgiving to God because we're giving him thanks. America in general makes a big deal about Thanksgiving. I mean, it really does. I mean, the, America loves this time because of the food and all. And let me just share some things that I found just recently that in the United States, about 280 million turkeys are sold for Thanksgiving <laughs> celebrations. Poor turkeys. Poor turkeys, I know, man. Imagine <laughs> if we run out of turkeys, you know, what are, what are we going to use? So that shows how much of a big deal it is in America. Um, each year, the average American eats somewhere between 16 to 18 pounds of turkey. Talk about some serious nap time nice. after that, right? <laughs> and lastly, check this out. This is where we come in as Californians. Californians are the largest consumers of turkey in the United States. Yikes. We love turkey. Yeah, that's right. We do. I'm, I'm guilty as charged. <laughs> I'm all over that. It yeah, is. That's just so funny to think about some of those statistics, Robert. And, uh, you know, some of the things that, that we put importance on. Yeah. You know what I mean? As Even as Christians, we put importance on eating and, right. and turkey and food. And, you know, that's what we do. It's, it's a good time of celebration for us. But we also need to remember that, yeah, we put 
importance on these types of things. We put importance on gathering together as a family and and things of that nature, but we also need to put importance on giving thanks to the Lord. Uh, Let's not leave out the one who, uh, he's the reason why we're here in the first place. You know, he's the reason why we even exist. Yep. And so oftentimes, you know, it can be real easy to just leave God out of the celebration when he should be the center of the celebration. And it's sad because uh, some families do, you yep. know, that they don't care about God. You know, they don't they don't think about Jesus Christ. They don't put God in the, you know, they don't bring God in their in their uh, meals and their celebration. But it's always cool as Christians when we gather together around food, you know, breaking of bread, right? Yep. Acts 242, what we base this program from. Um, we, we know that when we get together with, with believers and, and we share a meal and then talk about the Lord and just have that sweet fellowship, that it's, it's always a, a good thing to do. And I think it's a blessing to, to get that opportunity, um, even if it's once a year, because I know a lot of people fly. I mean, this is like one of the busiest um, times of the year. People yeah. are flying everywhere. You know, uh, airliners are making a lot of money off of people and all that. And then, of course, the day after Thanksgiving, all these companies are going to try to get people to buy their stuff. You know, yep. you have that Black Friday. So, um so we make it a big deal and everything, and and but as Christians, we want to really make it a big a big deal. We want to impact um, those around us, especially you know if you're gonna you know if we're we're gonna gather together even for Christmas as we look forward now to Christmas after Thanksgiving, as you gather together with family and friends, you know make a make it a big deal. Thanksgiving, make it a big deal. Christmas, make it a big deal, so that unbelievers as they come into your your gathering will look and say, "Wow, you guys really really emphasize." Christ in th- you know during Christmas time or, or Thanksgiving you really talk about God and thankful you know being thankful for him make it a big deal right absolutely yeah I think that's a great way uh, and a great practical thing that we can do as Christians to witness to our family a lot of times we're like okay w- what can I do during the holiday season uh, to be able to represent Christ uh, yeah. to my unsaving friends and family and a great thing to do practically is have the celebration at your house. Yeah. Have Thanksgiving at your house, have Christmas at your house, have New Year's at your house. So that way you're inviting people into your element and you're showing them this is what it looks like yeah. to celebrate Thanksgiving, keeping God at the center. Yeah. This is what it looks like to celebrate Christmas, you know, keeping God at the center or even New Year's keeping the Lord at the center. And practically speaking, uh, no better way to do it. Invite them into your element and now you're in charge. You get to pray. You get to focus on the yeah. Lord. And, and they're there, and they're there to follow suit. Yep. In fact, next week, we're going to make it a big deal. You know, when we get into December, we're going to be doing two topics back-to-back where we're going to make it a big deal. We're going to make Christmas a big deal. We're going to talk about the importance and power of the Christmas story. And after that, we're going to talk about sharing this Christmas story with your family and friends. So uh, in December, we're going to be doing this with you guys. You guys can have the opportunity to call in and engage with us. But um, let's go to another uh, another of our Facebook followers, uh, Dominica. Uh, she posted this, and she said this, uh, what she's thankful to God for, for your shining light in my life. You have saved me from the dark world, and you keep showing me your love. And she said at the end, I love you, Lord, with all my heart. You know, when she said, you have saved me from the dark world. Isn't it a dark world? It is 100%. And, you know, Robert, I thank the Lord every day that he brought me out of the miry clay, you know, and he set my foot upon a rock yeah. and set my foot upon Jesus Christ. Because, you know, I can I can think of some times in my life, and I, and I can even remember some times where I was an unbeliever, but I can still recognize God's hand of faithfulness in my life protecting me. Yeah. And I think about where I would be today if if God didn't save me. You know, I probably would have been an alcoholic, mm. you know, struggling with alcohol. And, and, I, and I agree with Dominica 100%. I thank the Lord every day for bringing me out of the dark world and setting my foot upon a rock. And it was all him. He, he did the whole thing. It was nothing in and of myself because in and of myself, I, I'm, a, I'm a sinner. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he brought me out of that miry clay. And, and that's one thing that I do praise the Lord for. And uh, I, I like to acknowledge and thank the Lord for because it blows my mind that as, as God looks at me, as God looks at Anthony, I'm clothed in the righteousness of Christ, and he sees Jesus. Mm-hmm. That, that, that blows my mind. Yeah. And so I, I thank the Lord that he's brought me out of the dark world as well. And, you know, no wonder John the Apostle said in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And then he kind of describes the dark world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are not obviously of the Father, but they're of the world. And, you know, just 
reading that and, and I go to that so many times, especially when I'm teaching, you know, if, if, I, if I'm doing a topic that relates to the world, I always bring this verse because it, it just reminds us that John says, don't love the world. And the world, the, the word love there is agape, is a sacrificial kind of love. So like, in other words, don't sacrifice yourself to this world system. Right. You know what I mean? And uh, because the things that are in this world, like like you said, the flesh, the eyes, uh, all this pridefulness, it's it's not good. It's not a good thing. That that destroys us. It makes us, you know, people that, that are not really living the true life. You know what I mean? And I think it's important that we need to recognize as Christians that the world is dark. And we have to be very careful. However, we are the light of the world. That's right. Matthew chapter 5, Jesus made it clear. We know as Christians the world is dark, but we also know that we're light. And we need to shine the light, take advantage of this dark world, and redeem the time, right? As Paul says Amen. in Ephesians chapter 5. So let's shine the light. Yeah, let's, let's not snuff the, the light out. We're called to be in the world, but, but not, not of, the, of world. the world. Right. And I think that's what we have to recognize. And I think, Robert, that kind of goes back to, to keeping an eternal perspective. Yeah. Because if we are living after the things of the world, we're living after things that are temporary. Things that, you know, like like sin. Sin yeah. might satisfy for a season, right. but it's going to it's gonna fizzle out really quickly. Right. And it's it's not going to leave you satisfied. You're always going to want more, 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 more. And then you're going to need more of that in order to be satisfied. And it, 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 it just, it's never, things of this world are never, ever going to give us the contentment that our heart so desires. The only one that's going to do that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And that's a part of keeping that eternal perspective that we're talking about. And, and Dominica brings on a, a great point, you know, of, of thanking the Lord for bringing us out of that darkness. Because while we were in that darkness, we were in bondage without realizing it. The enemy made us think that we were free because we could go out and do whatever we want. But in reality, we were in bondage. Exactly. It's kind of the way I look at it. It's kind of like when I see the world as far as the dark world as a Christian, you know, it's like if you're, if you're in a house and, and the house was burning, it's on, it was on fire. The first thing you're going to do is leave the house. You're not going to stay in there because right. you know you're going to die. You're going to burn. So you leave the house. And I think kind of I look at the world in that way. The world is kind of like a burning house. Why would you want to go back inside a world that is burning, a world that is kind of heading towards, you know, destruction. You know what? You want to get out of there. You want to go to safety. And of course, our safety is Christ. You know, that's where we go to. And um, but but to go back, it's like committing suicide. You're like, you're going to go back to the world that that took you in, chewed you up and spit you out. Don't go back there. Get out of it. It's a burning house. And uh, so so we definitely know it's the truth. It's a dark world. But let's not forget we're the light of the world that that's, you know, witness and encourage people to come to the light. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So we're going to go to another one here. This is Christopher from Carson City, Nevada. He posted, I'm thankful for God's unfailing love, my job, my salvation, my kids, the roof over my head, my parents, Calvary Chapel, my finances, my provisions, the Lord keeping me on the narrow path towards the narrow gate and deliverance from 10 years of alcoholism and sex addiction. Addiction. God is good. All glory to God. Wow. That's those are practical things, but yet they're very powerful. You know, when he's talking about even just as simple as the roof over my head. I mean, just if you have a house today, if you're sitting right now in a house, yep. spend some time around saying, Lord, thank you for the roof that's over my head. Because, you know, we take it for granted that we actually have a place to live. But I love everything else he said, you know, just, just, just you could tell his heart is just bursting out with thanksgiving. He's covering so many areas in his life, his yep. finances, provisions. Um, the Lord keeping them on a narrow path. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you know that the, the wide gate, the wide path is what leads to destruction. destruction the narrowest yeah. leads to life. And I never thought about that. I'm like, you know, that's cool. It's just something that I should practice to thank the Lord. Thank you for keeping me on that narrow path. Because our, our, our heart, our flesh wants to make it a little wide. Yep. You know, because that's, that's the kind of people that we are. You know what I mean? Uh, but to keep us on that narrow path, that narrow gate is a blessing. Yeah, that's that's huge. And I love what he said. You know, like like you talked about, just some of the daily practical things that we don't even that we don't even think about that we can just take for granted. You know, and it's just like, man, if I really think about it, I got my kids, yeah. I got my health, I got a roof over my head, I got food on the table, I got a job. You know, there's a lot of people uh, that are probably listening to this right now that that don't have a job. You know what yeah. I mean? And and if we do, that's something that we should be thanking the Lord for on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. 
And so I think it's important that we do recognize these these simple practical things that God bestows upon us that we can, you know, just take for granted on a daily basis. Yeah. And I'm sure his list can go on and on, on and, and on. on. Yep. I mean, this is what probably the Lord touched his heart with and, and he shared, but I'm sure if we sat down with him and, and just talked with them and, and we all shared about what we're thankful for, I'm sure there'd be a lot of things that he would still add to that list. Uh, so thanks so much, Christopher from Carson City, Nevada. Um, here's one from Ryan from Huntington Beach. He says, I'm thankful for Jesus. He sacrificed himself for me and I'm not uh, when I'm not worthy. He says, when I doubt, he shows up. When I don't feel loved, he loves me. He blessed my life with godly brothers and sisters in the Lord, and he blesses me through them. God is good. You know, the sacrifice of Christ, Jesus dying in our place, John three sixteen. you know what? For God so loved the world, and we can put our name, you know, that for God so loved Robert, for mm-hmm. God so loved Anthony, that he gave his only begotten son. And the other thing that I want to kind of talk with you about, Anthony, you know, we've, we talked a lot about this. Uh, we've had topics on this before in the past on Generation 242, and that is friendships. I mean, he's thankful for the brothers and sisters, not just brothers and sisters, but the godly brothers and sisters. How important is it to have godly friends, Anthony? Oh, uh, I can't even express that. I cannot express how important uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ are to me and how much they they benefit my walk with the Lord. I think of what it says in, in Hebrews, Robert, to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some. A lot of people forsake, you know, gathering together with our, our, our believing friends and our believing family and having that fellowship. A lot of people f- forsake that. And I don't think those people really understand what they're missing out on. Yeah. I mean, you think about Acts 2.42, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine in fellowship. That was a key thing that the early church continued steadfastly in because it was so important, because it was so beneficial to their daily walk with the Lord. And I think that fellowship, as as the, uh, this post said, that fellowship helps us to keep our eyes on the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, which of course is the crux of the matter. Yeah. We need to we need to recognize that and realize, man, Jesus paid it all. Mm-hmm. He didn't just pay half of it. The book of Hebrews says that he saved us to the uttermost. You know, he didn't just save five years of our life, ten years of our life. No, he did it all. And a lot of people are trampling that underfoot. And so when we recognize that as a Christian, it's unbelievable to think about. It is, it is. So we encourage you listening uh, to us today, those of you listening today, you know, Pick out good friends, godly friends. We're not look, We're not saying pick perfect friends. You're not going to find a perfect friend, but a friend who honors Christ, a friend who, who, who is going the same direction as you. Proverbs 12, 26 says this, Anthony, the righteous should choose his friends carefully for the way of the wicked leads them astray. So if you pick a friend who's not into Christ, he's going to lead you astray eventually. Yep. You know, if you're not strong enough to stand for your, for the truth, um, you're going to get persuaded. You're going to, they're going to really steer you the wrong way. And there are benefits when you have a friend that, who is like-minded, you know what I mean? Uh, Psalm 133, one, behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So you want unity, unity between you and Christ. You want that. And that's a good thing. It's a pleasant thing. When you can hang out with somebody, you don't have to worry about, you know, them saying something that, that would offend you or, 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 or you know, they're going to cuss or, 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 you know, encourage you to steal or to do something that you're, you're just not going to feel comfortable. You want somebody who's going the same way as you with Jesus and um, that you can feel comfortable. It's going it's, to, it's, it's a pleasant thing to be able to just move forward with a friend who honors Christ the way you honor Christ. And I think that's very important. I think that's key. And I think a lot of times when we say that, Robert, a lot of people go to that verse, you know, in the book of Matthew chapter 9 that says, well, Jesus hung out with the tax collectors and the sinners. Right. You know, why can't I? Well, I think our, our response to that should be, yeah, but Jesus also said, but go and learn that this means I desire mercy and not sacrifice, but I did not come to call right the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So the question is, is when we're hanging out with the tax collectors and the sinners, Uh, are we calling them to repentance Mm -hmm. or are we just hanging out with them because we want to be like them? And I think that's what we need to recognize. You know, like we just talked about earlier in the program, we're called to be light in a dark world, in the world, but not of the world. And so if we are around those people, we need to be the influence. We need to be calling them to repentance and be representing Christ. And that's why it's important that we 
do hang out with believers because those are the ones that are going to spur us on to continue walking strong with the Lord. And I like that point that you made because I think it's important. What we're talking about here, we're talking about friendship. You know, we're talking about somebody you can pray with, somebody that you can read the Bible with, somebody that you can, like you said, you can encourage each other, right? Um, that doesn't happen with a non-Christian. Right. You can still be friends with somebody who's not a Christian, uh, but you got to remember that, you know, th- there's a huge gap between you and them spiritually because you cannot just pray with them. I mean, you can right. pray for them, but you want to bring them to Christ. You know, obviously they become more of your ministry, you know, where you become more of their evangelist, you know. But when you're talking about a friend, a Christian friend who's already a Christian, you're talking about somebody that you can actually just lock arms together with and, uh, and like you said, grow together. Proverbs 18, 24 says, a man who finds friends must be must himself be friendly but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother and that's christian fellowship somebody that you can be like man we're just there's a bond a strong bond together because of Jesus Christ. Being like-minded. Yeah. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Generation 242, and uh, we're reading some of the posts that we had you post up on our Facebook page as to what you're thankful to God for. It's our very special Thanksgiving broadcast, and so let's see see if we can squeeze in another one, Robert, before the break. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Eunice from Pomona, she says uh, she's thankful to God for loving me. He didn't let me walk away from him. And for taking uh, my for taking my children and me out of false doctrine, wow! And revealing His truth through His Word, and for His Son Jesus Christ and His faithfulness in our lives. So again, we see another another person who is thanking God for opening their eyes to the truth. Um, obviously, we don't know the details here, but but God removed them from false doctrine, and uh, not only just you know Eunice, but even her children, which is huge, right? You know, to get them out before they themselves become deceived. Yeah, I think that's that's a little bit different than what we talked about earlier, Robert of being, you know, pulled from this world, uh, you know, she got pulled out of the clutches of the enemy there. That false yeah. doctrine, you know, that stuff can be dangerous. Yep. People get caught up in that. And, and what a blessing it is that, uh, you know, Eunice got pulled out of that. Not only did she get pulled out of it, but her family as well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there, there's people, Robert, that, that I pray for that I know who are caught up in, you know, in a cult, in a false doctrine. And, and they're convinced. Mm. They're convinced that this is the truth. Yeah. And so I pray for those people every single day. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty bad, you know, so we have to really be careful with that. But but definitely something to be thankful for, especially if you have come out of a of a, of a false religion, you know, that, that now you're 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 in the light. You know the truth. And that's a blessing. And I think another thing that Eunice said as well is that she's thankful that God won't let her go. Yeah. You know, I think of that song. I don't know who sings it. Oh, no, you never let go yeah. through the calm. Or through the, I mean, that's you true. Good. Keep doing it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but I think about that. Yeah. I'm like, you know, wow, you know, God will never let me go. The Bible says that he'll never leave me and he'll never forsake me. And, you know, I stand on those verses all mm-hmm. the time. And when Jesus said, lo, I am with you, even to the end of the age, yeah. it's like I, I, Jesus is with me. Yeah. God is with me and he's never going to let me go. He's faithful. Mm. And that's a great thing to be thankful to God for. Amen. Amen. Let, can we squeeze one more in before the break? Uh, well, let's go to a quick okay, break. Let's do that. And then we'll try to squeeze in another one afterward. Uh, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Generation 242. We, we have to go to a break right now. But uh, tonight it's a special Thanksgiving broadcast. We're just thanking the Lord for what he's done in our lives. Uh, We're allowing you to uh, post up on our Facebook page. We had you post up on our Facebook page some things that you were thankful to God for. And uh, we're, we're reading those things on the air. We're talking about them. And we're just praising and thanking the Lord. So we'll continue doing that when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to Generation 242. I'm Anthony Noble. Along with me is Robert Baltadano, and happy Thanksgiving. This is our special one-hour Thanksgiving broadcast, and we're just spending the hour praising and worshiping the Lord, giving Him all the praise, glory, and honor, and thanking Him uh, for all the things that He's done in our lives. We're, we're taking this hour to 
uh, read some of the things that you, our listeners, have posted up on our Facebook page. Uh, We asked you, what are you thankful to God for? And so we're going through some of those things. And we've had some amazing things, Robert, about, you know, God bringing us out of the darkness of the world, Mm -hmm. uh, God's faithfulness, so many things that, that, you know, we, we can take for granted on a daily basis, but we need to remember it's important. Yeah, we're, we're making it a big deal, uh, but not just for today. You know, hopefully we can get into the habit of thanking God just on a daily basis. You right. know, when you wake up in the morning, kind of like the children of Israel did in the morning, in the evening, sacrifice of Thanksgiving, just thanking God for, for your, you know, your life and thanking God to bring you home safely. Just so many things we can thank God seriously daily. Amen. Amen. So if you'd like to jump on board our Facebook page, uh, it's facebook.com forward slash generation 242. That's facebook.com forward slash generation 242. And uh, let's see how many we can squeeze yep. in, Robert, just in the last few minutes of the program. Definitely. Here. Here's Susan. Susan says uh, she's thankful to God for the strength that he gives her, peace, comfort, and joy. She says, when my body and things around me are falling apart. You know, she kind of echoes um, Philippians 4.13 when Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And uh, that's a that's definitely something to be thankful for. That even in our weakest moment, there's strength that the Holy Spirit gives us, right. and, and God gives us that strength. And uh, we can do a lot of things, all things, as it says here, through Christ who strengthens me. And I think that's huge for us to remember because you know God is going to give us the strength to accomplish what He's given us to do today. Yeah. I think oftentimes we're so worried about the future. Well, I don't have enough strength, and I'm not going to be able to do this. And we're thinking about so far in the future. Mm-hmm. When it's like, no, my grace is sufficient for you for today. Yeah. He's going to give us what we need for today, and we need to recognize and realize that. And I'm thankful to God for that as well. Yeah, definitely. Here's uh, Christina from Ontario. She says uh, she's thankful to God for being a mighty God, patient, and for family who never gave up on me. That's pretty cool. That's huge. The patient part really strikes me even more because I don't think we realize how patient God is with us daily. You know, he is long-suffering you know, even in the book of, uh, I think I think it was First Peter, Second Peter. I'm not sure which one it was, but where people were saying that the coming of Christ wasn't coming, you know, and, and he forgot or whatnot. But the reason why he hasn't come already is because he is patient, not wanting anyone to perish. So he's giving people a chance to get right with them right now. It's a period of grace that we're living in at the moment, but he is definitely patient. Right. And it sounds like her family must be Christians. Yeah. <laughs> if they never gave up on her. Right. And I think that's that's a key thing for us to recognize, Robert, is as a Christian, if we have unbelieving friends, if we have unbelieving family, don't give up on them. I yeah. know it's tempting. It can be tempting sometimes because it's like you minister them, you tell them the way, you tell them the truth, and it's like, but then they just go back. They don't listen. It seems like it just went in one year and out the other. And and it, sometimes it's like, well, just forget about it then. Just just give up on them. But don't, don't do that. Right. We can't give up on, on our friends and family because they need us. They need us to pray for them, and they need us to be there so when they do finally hit rock bottom, they know who to go to. Exactly, exactly. Okay, here's uh, one from uh, Trish Ann. She says that she's thankful to God that uh, he heals the brokenhearted. You know, that's pretty cool. I never thought about that. You know, uh, was it, I think, Psalm 147.3, uh, that it says that the psalmist said he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. And it's like, you know what? God is the the healer of the broken heart. You know what I mean? And, and, And I'm sure that right now, maybe you're listening to us right now and you're like, yep, that was me last week. You know, and God healed me. God healed a broken heart. Maybe you went through a relationship. You were going in, a, you were in a relationship, and uh, you know what? Now you're like brokenhearted, but God's like, don't worry about it. Right. You know, and He heals you. He comforts you. I've heard testimony after testimony of people, you know, in a situation where they're brokenhearted. Yeah. Maybe they've been let down by a boyfriend or a girlfriend, right. or you know, somebody has let them down in some way, shape, or form. And that person is absolutely just, you know, heartbroken. Yeah. They don't know, what do I do? Where to, where to turn? And I've heard testimony after testimony that when they gave their life to the Lord Jesus Christ, he mended that broken mm-hmm. heart. He healed that broken heart because he filled that void that they'd been searching for in other people. Yeah. And those other people let them down. But yeah, I, I've heard that over and over and over again, that God does indeed heal the brokenhearted. And uh, you know, praise the Lord that he does that. Yeah. And that's a great thing to be thankful for. Yeah, yeah. And here's here's one from Sandra. This is deep, Anthony. This is deep. This is what it says. It says, I am filled with thanks, thankfulness and gratitude to our Lord for, uh, he says, uh, she says, he placed me in an adoptive home at birth. It says, birth wow. mom did not abort me. That's one thing that she's thankful for. Wow. 
In, in that adoptive home, my grandmother shared Jesus with me when I was seven years old. So she's thankful for that. Uh, throughout my childhood, she was sexually abused, but yet she survived. She's thankful that she survived that horrific thing. Uh, she says, I'm thankful that I have, uh, that even when I've stumbled and fallen, she says that God has picked me up. Wow. Um, she was delivered by God f- from severe drug addiction 20 years ago. She's thankful that God uh, led her to Jesus. And and also she says that, that uh, Jesus led me to my birth parents' door only to find that they're born again. Wow. And my birth father is an ordained minister through a Calvary chapel. Wow. Uh, she says that she's thankful that her son came to Jesus in his incarceration and she's just blessing and thanking God for all of these things. Could you imagine that? That's that's unbelievable. And I think that's a little bit of what we talked about earlier, that even before she was a Christian, yeah. she can look back and see that the hand of the Lord was with her yeah. all the way from the from the beginning of her birth, that, yeah. her, that her birth mom didn't abort her. Mm. You know, I mean, I mean, I'm sure she, she can think about it now. You know, if, if I would have been aborted, then I wouldn't have my life. I wouldn't yeah. be able to be thankful for all these things and experience all the things that I'm experiencing. Yeah, that that's pretty crazy. I'm not crazy in a negative way. I'm sorry. That's probably the wrong word to say, but that's just very deep and, and very heartfelt felt, you know, like you're saying that God's hand was in her life you know, throughout, even through those dark times. And yet God has, you know, kept her going and she's got an amazing God story now. Absolutely. hundred percent. And I think of how she said that, you know, God healed her from drug addiction. Yeah. And I think that's something that a lot of people need to realize. And of course, once again, Robert, we hear testimony after testimony that, you know, God can deliver you from, from drug addiction. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I've heard a lot of testimonies, um, you know, our, our good friend, Pastor David Zamora is one of them. Yeah. You know, he said, Lord, if, if you're God, then take this addiction from me. And he did. He took mm, it from him. Right. And, you know, God can heal that. God, yeah. God has the power to be able to break people free of those things. Exactly. Exactly. So, so you know, with everybody that sent, the, uh, sent these things to us, we're, we're, you know, we're thankful for you and just, you know, being able to, to be part of this program. Um, you know, just real quickly, uh, the last one that we do have is Irene from Chino, California. She says she's thankful for God's unconditional love and grace and displaying it in those around her. So again, you know, the thankfulness of God's love and everything that we see here, it's just been a blessing and an awesome time tonight just to be able to just give God the platform. Yes. And to just, you know, emphasize this Thanksgiving uh, uh, time for, you know, giving God thanks for everything. You know, we have a lot of things to be thankful for every day. And that's what, that's what we should be doing as Christians on Thanksgiving is doing what we just have done for the past hour expressing our thanks to the Lord, even things, Robert, that just seem practical. Mm -hmm. I love those things. Like we talked about earlier, the roof over our head, food on the table, friends, family, having a job, you know, some of those things that we take for granted. Let's recognize those things tonight. You know, we only got a few more hours of Thanksgiving left, but let's keep on doing it for the rest of the year and for the rest of our lives, just thanking the Lord for everything that he's done for us. You know, God is so awesome. He's so powerful. He's so mighty. And you know, Robert, one of the things that I'm thankful for is that God's mercies are new every morning. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You're right. Every day we wake up in the morning and it's fresh. Yes. You know what I mean? Even if you had a bad day today, you know what? Tomorrow morning is a new day. That's right. You're going to wake up and God's mercies are new for you. That, that's, that's what keeps us going. That's right. So happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thank Thanksgiving. you so much for tuning in. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure to jump on our Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash generation 242. That's facebook.com forward slash generation 242. For Robert Baltadano and me, Anthony Noble, good night, happy Thanksgiving, and God bless.